We're seeing right now uh, the last dance. I don't know if you've been watching any of that stuff uh, on ESPN involving Michael Jordan, Chris, and about just the sheer hatred that Jordan still has years later for the Detroit Pistons. You could see it. You could feel it. You could taste it. You could just it was it's all over the documentary. Is there anybody that you particularly truly dislike from back in the day that right now would just get you all seething? professionally you know it's funny it's because now that we're home we're all looking for shows to watch with our families and our yes. wives and yes. i suggested the last dance i'm always like basketball no no way so i'm gonna have to watch that one on my own but <laughs> i mean I, I i think that there were guys in the past that i had issues with um i mean triple h is one of them he'll tell you the same in the early 2000s we didn't have much uh like for each other but we always had great matches and i think this might be one of the reasons why we just had this professional rivalry uh, maybe a little bit of a personal dislike. But then, you know, fast forward four, five, six, seven years, you get to be, you know, a little bit older and wiser. And you yes. think back, like, why Why did we have so many problems? Why do we hate each other? Why do we not like each other? And then, you know, now we're, we're friends. And I think it's just, there's a lot of professional rivalry when you're when you're young and full of vim and vigor, as they say. It happens in rock and roll bands all the time. The bands will break up and you know, 10 years later, get back together and wonder why do we waste 10 years of our lives not playing together? So I think that there's always that little bit of um, that, that, that animosity that drives you to become better. And if you have a case like, let's say, Jericho and, and, and Triple H, our matches were always great because there was a little bit of real life animosity between us. I'm going to show him. Well, I'm going to show him. Well, I'm going to show him. And I think that's good in a certain way. And I would almost suggest that back in those days that Vince McMahon would, would uh, subtly encourage that because he knew he was going to get better results inside of the ring. Well, I mean, again, the last dance is about, you know, the, those Jordan years. Uh, if we could do a 10-part documentary uh, from your world, uh, what, what, uh, what, I guess, 10, 15-year span do you think you'd like to see a documentary on, Chris? You know, I, I think probably the best the best career i ever had i mean the first eight years was 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 good i think when i turned into kind of the suit and tie big word using jericho in 2008 <laughs> up until now i mean that's pretty much there's your there's your 12 year span you and had a couple years on the, on the back end but that's kind of i think the, the highlight of my career um and probably the most interesting part of my career with all the longevity and the chances that i took and the, the changes that i made um, you know, I'm basically changing the business when I signed with AEW. The whole the whole business changed at that point in time. Uh, so that's kind of, I think, that'd make a, a great uh, kind of a story there of, of a, a section of, of a guy's career who always gave his all but wasn't afraid to take a few chances and ruffle a few feathers along the way. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.